For those of you who don't know me already, my name is Craig, host of Digital Startup, breaking down tricky tasks into simple steps so you can build a successful online store. In this series, I'm going to be creating an e-commerce store from scratch using Magento 2. And I'm going to tailor the store around selling cases for eyeglasses. In the last episode, I talked to you through the business information, product data, and product images that I plan to use for the store. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to set up a Magento 2 web server using a web host company called Nexus. You can find a link to their services in the video description. If you have any questions during the video, then do drop a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Anyway, if this all sounds like something that you might be interested in, I'll see you in just a second. So before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to all of the people who viewed and liked the last video. It's not going to sound like much in terms of numbers, but in the last video, I got 48 views and 10 likes, which are low numbers, but the ratio is great. Whereas one of my other videos um, that I did recently has had over 1200 views and only 13 likes. So the engagement was great on the last video. So thank you very much for that. Uh, also, um, I have added a link in the descriptions of both the last video and this video and videos moving forward, which takes you to this article. And in this article, this is where I'll be collating all of the videos in one place. Not only that, you'll be able to download all the assets that I've been working on. So obviously in the last video, I created the CSV and I uh, found those images and I resized them and broke them up and stuff. Anyway, um, I've made all the links accessible here so you can download them off my Google Drive. So if you want to follow along um, or you just want to do your own dummy store and you can't be bothered to do that from scratch, help yourself. That's not a problem at all. Okay, so I guess the first thing we should do is uh, set up a Magento installation. I've decided not to go with creating a server from scratch because I've done that to death. Uh, instead, I'm just going to do a one-click installation through Nexus.net. Uh, you may have heard me mention them in the past. I kind of use them for all of these projects. They're, they're okay, yeah. So let's head over to Nexus.net, and so I'm going to go with the one that I normally go with, which is the SIP100. I think I'm going to have to edit some of this out because obviously it'll have my personal details in and payment methods, so I'll cut that out where I need to. But let's um, do this first of all. Pick a server for um, UK. That'll do. Monthly. Okay, I'm going to uh, recycle an old domain name that I used in a video that I did on Nexus a couple of years ago. So if I'm going to add digitalstartuptutorials.com for the domain. And I'm going to choose Magento 2 installation, and then I'm going to add to cart. And then, let's have a look. SIP 100, 24.95, check out. And place order. Uh, let's complete the process, log into PayPal. I'll have to cut this next bit out of the video. So that's all gone through now and that's all paid for. Um, unfortunately, this is the bit where I have to wait a little while. Um, it'll get set up tomorrow now because it's quite late for me. So for me, I'll continue on with this tomorrow. And for you, you'll see me in just a second. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. It's actually been about four days uh, since I recorded that first bit. I actually recorded this bit a couple of days later and then when I went to edit it, I realized that I hadn't turned on the microphone. Actually, let's just, yeah, I have this time. So <laughs> at that point, I kind of felt a bit disheartened um, and so I've come to record this uh, again on the morning of uh, uploading it. So I'm going to crack on with it now. Now, when I uh, originally did this, when I messed up with the whole recording thing, I did run into one or two issues um, that I since resolved. And I want to talk to you about 
those issues that I went into um, when I come to do it so that if you're in the same position as me, hopefully this will help you in some way. So th now that I've had the email back from Nexus, um, I'm going to go through everything in the email, of which I'm not going to show you because it's got private details in there, but I'm going to go through everything in the email and go through a kind of checklist that I wrote down. And I want to make sure everything's working and everything's set up, ready for when I actually come to start configuring the back end of Magento and putting in all those settings. So the first thing that I want to do is click on the links provided in the email just to make sure the front end and back end are working. And as you can see, the front end and the back end here loaded fine. You'll notice that I've been given a temporary uh, domain name URL, which is digital eight dot next temp dot net. The reason why I have a temporary domain name is because despite the fact that I registered or told it to associate that digital startup tutorials dot com domain when I initially bought this package, um, the domain name still needs configuring so that the name service points over to this website. Um, and that's something I'll go over in a moment. But like I said, that's why I have a different URL to the one that I originally set up. Okay, like I said, the front end and the back end are working fine. That's good. The next thing I want to do is check that the SSH works so that I can uh, log in through there. But before I can do that, I need to log into the SiteWorks portal, which is uh, the Nexus portal. And when I log in, there's two things that I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to log in and change the default password that it's given me in the email. And I'm also going to go in and whitelist myself so that I can make connections to the server via SSH and FTP. Um, the, the IP address that I'll be whitelisting will be the IP address from where I happen to be working. Now, I'm lucky that wherever I happen to be or be working, it's normally a static IP that I'm working from. But if you're working from home, perhaps, you might have a dynamic IP, which tends to change whenever your router gets restarted. Um, so just bear that in mind when you come to whitelist and it works. And then a couple of weeks later, it's not working and you think, oh my God, my server's down. Just check your IP is whitelisted, first of all. And it's a good habit that if you do have a dynamic IP address, every time you come to whitelist the IP address you're using, uh, go back and delete the old one because um, you never know who might end up with the IP address. I know odds and stuff, but I'm, I'm big on security. Okay, so um, by clicking on the link in the email, it takes me to the SiteWorks portal, so very similar to what you'll see here. And I'm just going to pop my email address in there and the password that was given in the email. Okay, and the first thing, like I said, I'm going to do is go to Administration User Accounts and edit this user. Then I'm going to pop in a new password. Okay, and then I want to uh, whitelist my address. So under hosting features, firewall rules, um, let's, let me just delete these because this is, this is when I came to set it before. So let me just quickly delete this and then I can do it again for you. Okay. So when you initially go in, it'll, you'll just see this with no records on there. So simply click SSH, SFTP, and FTP, just those three, and then hit whitelist my current IP. And that'll grab the IP address from where you're logged into so that you don't have to go find it. And it'll automatically populate the table underneath and give you access to through SSH and SFTP. So just go over that. SSH, in case you don't know, is when you go in and run commands uh, on the server and uh, SFTP and FTP is when you drag and drop files using an FTP program to upload images or files or whatnot to the server. So 
those two points are done. So that's great. So we've done that. So now that we're whitelisted, let's connect via SSH. That is not SSH. That's uh, something else. <laughs> there we go. Um, and I'm going to grab the IP address of the server from my email. Uh, this is putty that I'm using for Windows, by the way. And I'm going to call this Let's Build. Now, one thing that I like to do when I set up a new um, server in putty, when I bookmark it, is I like to go into Connection and change 0 to 60. I'm just going to go back to Session now. And when I come to save that, that'll save that setting. The reason why I go into connection and change that from zero to 60 is because on a lot of servers I've worked on in the past, it seems like you, to kick you off um, if you have a few moments or minutes of inactivity. So the changing from zero to 60 will just ping the server and say, yes, I'm still here, I'm still working. Don't kick me out whilst I'm doing something. So that, that's just something that I like to do. So let's connect now onto the server. Um, the username it gave me was, let's have a look. It's probably something silly like admin. Oh no, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Digital eight, digital eight. Okay. And I'm going to pop in the password. Okay. So you won't see it this time because like I said, I've, I've done this video already and I had to go back and reset a lot of stuff. Um, when you log into the server for the first time, it is going to ask you for your password again. And then it's going to ask you for a new password and to repeat that password for security purposes. So just bear that in mind. So it's going to force you to do that update. So we can see we've successfully connected to the server via SSH. So we're happy with that. And once you do this yourself, you'll have updated your password. So we're happy there. I'm just going to close this. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is make sure that the FTP is working correctly. Now, this is the bit where I messed up and I want to go over it with you. So first things first, let's just, uh, I'm using FileZilla here. I'm just going to set up a new site and I'm going to call this Let's Build. Okay, so in the email, the email assumes that I have already configured my domain name to be pointing to the server. Therefore, the host details that it gives you are incorrect. So in the email, because it assumes that my domain name is already set up, it gives me uh, the host ftp.digitalstartuptutorials.com. However, that won't work because like I said, the URL or domain name is not set up yet to point to the server. And I struggled with this for a couple of minutes before I realized what I'd done wrong. So if you are following this step by step and you're in the, you're in the exact same situation as me, then you just need to use the same details that you got for the SSH. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is ignore that the host is using the domain name and instead use the IP address of the server again in the email. There we go. Uh, next, I'm going to change FTP to SFTP. And then I'm going to change uh, login type from anonymous to normal. And the user, again, the user for the FTP in the email says it's FTP at digitalstartuptutorials.com. Let me just... Um, Let me just copy and paste that. So that, that's the that's the username that it gives me, right? Okay, again, because we haven't actually set up the domain yet, uh, the SSH username will work in its place. Digital 8. And then the password that you set up to log in through SSH is the password you'd use here. So let me pop that in. Okay, now I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go into uh, my bookmarks and try and connect. There we go. And we've connected successfully. So let me just go over that one more time because, like I said, when I recorded this before, I did struggle a bit. If you have purchased one of the packages off nexus.net and during the setup you have put in a domain name, then when you receive all the login details from Nexus, Nexus will be assuming that you've already set up the domain name to point to the server. 
But if you haven't yet, or you're trying to do this quickly, more quickly than what the domain name's been set up for, or more quickly than you've, if you haven't given uh, the domain name chance to update to point to the server, then just use the SSH details instead of the SFTP details in the email. I feel like I've possibly confused matters by talking about it too much, but hopefully you get the point. Okay. Whew. Um, so next, uh, we'll do the whole domain thing. Now, the domain name that I used is something that I bought from Nexus a year or two ago. Um, and when I purchased that domain, I received an email from them giving me login details, uh, well, a login portal, where to go, and the login details, how to uh, amend the domain. So uh, this is the portal that I was given to connect to the domain um, management system. And if I just use digital startup tutorials.com, so if I log in here, now every service uh, is different in the way it's laid out, but they're kind of fundamentally the same. You will tend to find that whoever you're with, if you've got a domain name, for example, with um, GoDaddy or my mind's gone blank, I can't think of anything else, you'll tend to find they'll be well documented as to um, how to change all this. So with this particular one, again, if you use Nexus, I need to go into domain locking first of all, because I can't make any edits on here until I change domain locking from enable to disable and then hit submit. Once I've done that, I then go into name servers. And then from there, I go into manage name servers. Now, again, I've already done this, um, but in the email that you get from Nexus, once you um, rent the server and it gives you all your details, in the email towards, let's have a find it. Okay, uh, towards the middle of the email, um, there's a section that says your account name servers. All you've got to do is delete what's already in here and then copy and paste the two records back in and hit save configuration. Once you've done that, go back into domain locking. Obviously save that, go back into domain login uh, locking, hit enable, then submit again. Now this will take around about 24 to 40 hours for this to update. Uh, once it has updated, we, you can then use the domain name that you've registered in order to connect to the server rather than use the digital eight temporary domain name that I was given. What I'll do next week when I go over the configuration uh, I will change Magento to be looking out for the digital startup tutorials domain name and change that over. So I'll swap that out at a later point, but we will go over that. So just to check over my list, we have received the email from Nexus. We have checked that both the front end and the back end loads. We have updated our passwords where applicable for the um, SiteWorks portal for Nexus and the SSH details we've updated. Um, we check the FTP works and we covered that issue. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is to log into Magento and remove or disable the admin account and create my own account. So obviously when you have two sets of information to log into a system, such as a username and a password, there's kind of like two levels of security there. If you want to hack in, you need to guess both their username and their password so if you uh, when you set up accounts and you're automatically given an account that's called admin that's half the work already done for the hacker to work out you know I mean, what's more obvious than having a username than admin so something that i like to do is disable or remove the default admin account and replace it with something else usually something obscure would be good but i'm just going to put my name for the sake of this so i'm just going to log into magento using the uh, details provided to me in that Nexus email. Um, and the plan is that I'm going to go into system or users. Then I'm going to add a user, and that which will be me. So I'm going to go with Craig, uh, username. Yeah, it's just to stick with Craig. Um, Craig and
Okay, give my user a password. And then I'm going to assign this new user as an administrator. And then I'm going to put my admin password in to authorize this record and hit save. Hopefully that'll go through. Okay, that's done. So now I'm going to sign out of my admin account. And then I'm going to log in again as Craig. Let's clear this. And now I'm going to go system, all users. And then I'm going to go into the default admin account. And I'm going to deactivate it. And then put in my administrator password to authorize the record update and hit save. Um, despite the warning, I think that has been activated. Yep, yeah, so that's updated that record. Okay, so that pretty much covers setting up um, everything once you have registered with nexus.net. Like I say, if you're interested in working out how to build a server from scratch, like getting a completely blank server and then installing Magento, um, I have a playlist which I'll link to somewhere in the title here in the little card and then you can watch that series but this kind of wraps up the video now next week i am going to go through magento and start setting up all the settings that need doing and configure it using all the information that i collated last week where i worked out what the business was called what the email address would be that i'd use the um the physical address and i'm going to start setting up magento in a way that i want to reflect this uh, made up business that I'm doing so that's something we'll do then and that'll be on Friday that I'll put the video out if at any point you found this video useful hit that like button if you want to stay apprised of videos that I post in the future hit that subscribe button and hit that bell as well because you'll get a notification when a video goes out and until next time guys take care